Hello tiny friends and welcome back to Tiny Keyhole Minis. I'm Jolene and today I am creating the last miniature for the Hall Tree series. Now even though I am creating the last miniature it's not actually going to be the last piece that I add to the Hall Tree and you'll see that in the final viewing. Now I'm going to be creating a vintage style umbrella and I've never done this before so this is going to be interesting to see how this turns out. I'm going to begin with a eight sided octagon here and I have prepared that really thin brown craft paper that I love to use with the black acrylic and Mod Podge mixture and it gives it sort of like this vinyl leathery texture and look and all I'm doing is taking my ruler here and I am making my folds for my panels here from point to point. So I'm going from one side to the opposite side and just creasing out these folds here. Now I am actually following some um, instructions on an umbrella tutorial that I found on Pinterest but because I'm a visual learner, uh, I kind of get lost with those instructions. So I'm only going to follow them up into where I get confused. And then I'm going to be on my own with this and try to figure this out on my own. So the umbrellas on the tutorial look like they're 112 scale in the end results, but the measurements are fairly large. So I actually scaled this down to uh, four and a half inches by four and a quarter inch. So um, that seemed to work out pretty well in the end. So all I'm doing is beginning with my folds and I'm going from point to point, making sure I get all my folds into place. So I've got eight sides here. And I do actually go in and fold it another eight times to get a total of 16 folds. And I probably didn't need to do that. Um, but again, I, at this point I was following the instructions. I do kind of get lost in this project a little bit, but I end up figuring it out. And so after all my folds are completed, uh, what's going to end up happening is I'm going to have a plus sign in the middle and that's where I'm going to be able to locate the very center point of this octagon here. So I'm going to poke a hole right in the middle here and then I have this tiny micro grommet or eyelet that I'm going to be gluing into place right in the center there. And then it's just going to blow away in the wind. There it goes. <laughs> my fan is on tiny friends so for the shaft and the handle I am going to be using a paper clip and I've just clipped it off uh, where it actually curves and I'm sorry tiny friends I didn't take note of the measurements on this it's probably about three and a half to four inches in total I'm just not in the habit of taking measurements when I'm eyeballing everything but then I clipped off about a half of an inch piece here and I'm going to use this for the spike on the top part of the umbrella and I'm really not sure if this has a name but I know you all know what it looks like. <laughs> so I'm just going to use some Aline's metal and jewelry glue and glue that right inside the grommet like so. And this is what it looks like. So now I can uh, flip this over and I'm going to begin with my tacky glue and I am just going to uh, locate where that plus sign is and run this tacky glue right down all four sides of this plus sign. And I'm going to take my paper clip and I'm going to place it right down on one of these sides. Now it doesn't really matter which side. I'm just going to lay it flat just like this and then 
carefully fold in each side that has that glue right up to that shaft piece and glue it right into place and I'm just going to press my creases down nice and tight I'm pressing them down on the inside around that shaft and on the outside and so now I have four flaps and uh, this is basically where the uh, instructions <laughs> for this tutorial ended for me so <laughs> after I have this part completed I am pretty much on my own to try and figure this out because I just could not make sense of the instructions so I'm gonna give it a nice trimming and uh, make sure it's nice and even along the top parts of these flaps and then I'm gonna somehow try to figure out how to fold this in the way it should be so that I have doubled my flaps and in the end I'll have eight flaps going all the way around this umbrella here. Now I do have to keep shaping it on the end because my little pointy piece keeps wanting to bend and the glue is still wet inside so I just work it and manipulate it as I go along this whole process. But this was a good learning process for me tiny friends. Um, I made some great mental notes for future umbrellas like for example I probably should have and will in the future add that little spike tip on at the very end with the last details but I do end up getting it straight in the end here so I have figured out how to fold these things in and create the rest of the flaps here so I have just opened up a flap and laid it flat down here so that the center part is actually laying on the paper clip and then fold it up like a little taco into itself and this will create two more flaps and I'm basically just going to go around the whole umbrella and do this same technique with each flap now this is kind of like origami so if you've ever done origami before this is basically what I'm doing here <laughs> and so that's pretty much how I'm creating this little umbrella. So I'm going to go ahead and do this uh, to the next flap and show you one more time. It did get a bit easier for me so once I figured out the first flap um, I just kind of rolled with it and got into a little flow here. So I'm just going to open up that flap and this toothpick here is really going to help me get all the way down to that bottom to the tip where the grommet is so that I can get a nice fold from the very tip of this flap here. So that was pretty useful. And I'm just folding it down and giving it some nice tight creases and then folding it on itself and creating that double flap there. And now I have four flaps four more flaps and I'm just going to continue all the way around it you have my heart
Okay, tiny friends, I am done with that part of this <laughs> and I have begun to start twisting it closed around itself. And I have to do this a few times because the mod with the Mod Podge and the flaps laying all on top of each other, it's pretty stiff. So I just keep twisting it tighter and tighter around itself until it takes hold and it it actually does after I give it enough twists there. So now while I'm thinking about um, how I'm going to create the handle part, I'm going to go ahead and create the strap that uh, keeps this umbrella closed. So I'm going to use a scrap piece of the thin craft paper that I began with and I'm just going to add some glue and fold it over on itself to create a double thickness and cut a very small strip and I am taking the end of it here and just folding it right over itself I'm going to give it a little snip and a slight curve to the top here and then I'm actually going to uh, glue it down on top of itself here and this is going to give me uh, a little place to add my little button snap later on. It will also allow you to see it a little better. So I'm just pinching it nice and tight and closing it down. I'm actually going to glue this to uh, one of the flaps and I just picked a random flap and I'm going to glue it to the inside of this flap here. And I am going to uh, pinch it down and close it and hold it into place for a little while. Now, um, anytime I'm gluing a piece of this, I have to hold it a little bit longer because it's so stiff, but this is what it looks like all wrapped up. So now I'm just going to take a little bit of glue and place a little bit on the inside of each flap and just press it closed around itself. And while I'm doing this the whole time, I'm going to be keep adding a twist, a nice tight twist to keep that nice and tightly closed and it'll finally hold its shape. So this is what it's looking like and I'm loving how this is coming out and there's actually a little bit of weight to this little umbrella here. So it feels a little heavy, but I'm just straightening up my pieces here and this is what it looks like. It's so super cute. Okay, so for the handle, I'm going to try something new that I, I just had an idea about. I don't know how it's going to turn out. Let's just give it a try. I'm going to dip the handle in the black acrylic and Mod Podge mixture. I have a little jar of it here. I'm just going to dip the handle right in there and see what happens. I'm not really sure what's going to happen, if it's going to work out. I'm just testing this little idea out here. So I'm shaking off the excess. I'm going to let it dry completely and I'm going to do that about three, maybe four times. And I'm letting it dry in between each round. So I'm going to give this a go and see if this works out. And in the meantime, while that's drying, I can take some of these nail embellishments here. I've picked out these little circles that have holes in them. And I'm just going to coat one of them a few times with some antique metallic gold acrylic paint. Take a look at this handle here. Now, I've dipped it about four times, but I think three would be sufficient. But it worked out very well. It's kind of like coated the coating they put on metal, like maybe a paper clip. Um, so it worked out really well. 
I'm really happy with it, with the results. So I'm going to go in and um, touch up anything that uh, you can see that doesn't look like it's black, maybe some glue or maybe the paper showing. So I'm just going to go in with that black acrylic and Mod Podge. The handle is still wet, so I'm trying to handle it with care. It's probably going to take about 24 hours before it fully cures, so I'm being very cautious here. But I'm just touching it up and cleaning it up some. And I've got this tiny little black rhinestone here, and I'm just adding that onto that circle ring that I painted to create a little snap button. Now this part here is a tiny little strip that I'll be adding on the top here onto the spike just to give it a little bit added detail. So I've colored it with my metallic silver chrome paint marker pen. Now this micro piece here that I just created, I'm just going to use some of that jewelry and metal glue and just put a dab right on the tip here and then I'm going to lay this down on the little tip. I'm just going to add some more detail to this top part. I'm actually laying it right up against that metal grommet piece and I'm just going to let it set for a little bit and take a good grip before I actually wrap it around itself. But I thought this would be a good time while that's sitting to actually add this little tiny snap button that I've created. I'm just going to use my tacky glue. I have it sitting out so I'm just using that tiny friends. And I'm just putting a little bit down to place that little snap button on there that I created. I really love how it looks. It really does give an added detail to this umbrella here. So that's what that looks like. And I'm just cleaning up any excess glue. So I'm going to go in and wrap that strip around that spike here. But this is what it's looking like and I am super excited about this little miniature, Tiny Friends. I love this. I love the way it looks. I love the way it feels. I love the weight of it. So I definitely see more umbrellas in my future uh, miniature treasures and I want to explore with uh, different fabrics and different styles so I will be creating more along the way here but I'm just going to finish this off with some tacky glue it's going to be just paper to paper so I don't need anything stronger than that and I'm actually as I'm twisting this around I'm actually pushing it down closer to lay on that grommet and actually shaping it um, so it actually goes from a straight edge to kind of like a curved edge towards the top of this little tiny strip here. But I do notice that that little spike tip isn't really accurate uh, when it comes to the real life size one. I feel like they're a little bit longer on a real umbrella. So I might explore with that a little bit more later on if I decide to create more vintage umbrellas, which I most likely will because I absolutely love creating vintage miniatures. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to do. But for this one here, it actually turned out pretty nice in the end. So I don't mind that it's not technically as long as it should be in comparison to real life. I know that we're shrinking everything down, so it works. <laughs> I'm okay with it. So I'm just pushing it down and closing it up here. You can see how the top part of that little paper strip has formed a little dome kind of shape there. So it's definitely taken a nice little shape and given uh, some more nice detailing to this little tip here. 
And I just want to say, do not be afraid to try something new that you haven't tried before, that you really want to try, or something that you would really like to have in your collection, because this was my very first attempt at this. And usually I make a practice one when I'm doing something that I haven't done before, or I don't really know how to create it, so that when I'm showing you, I have some sort of idea and I can have a steady flow of what I'm doing. So to bring up some of these details of the folds here, I'm just going to go in with a little bit of highlighting and dry brushing with some soft gray acrylic paint. This piece actually turned out to be one of my favorite pieces. Definitely uh, my favorite piece that I created for the hall tree. But overall, it turned out to be one of my favorite pieces. I absolutely adore this tiny little umbrella. Now, again, this was my first time doing this. I've never done this before, so I definitely encourage you all to try something new. Don't be afraid if you haven't done it before. Just go for it. So here are the final two pieces. I know you saw the pocketbook. In the previous video this was actually before I added the little handkerchief and these are the last two pieces that I'm creating for the hall tree not the last two pieces that will go on to the hall tree this project has um, spun into a new project and I will be sharing that with you in the next video tiny friends I hope you all enjoyed this video today, and if you have, please give it a thumbs up, click that like button, let me know so in the comments below. I want to thank everybody for watching. Thank you to all my subscribers. Don't forget to hit that top notification bell button, and we'll look at the haul tree now, and then we'll revisit it in the next video. So this 1920s um, cloche hat, I really had a bargain with my paper era to uh, get this back and actually give it to the granny because she adored it so much that she agreed if I made her her very own she would give it to the old lady of the house and I promised I would make her her very own. I introduced my paper era in my DIY hat series in the second episode of that so if you'd like to see that and have it yet you can find that in the playlist. And see that empty space on the top of the hall tree? I'll be filling that up with some more miniature treasures. And you'll get to see what I put up there in the next video. So for the next project, uh, that letterbox there really has to go, tiny friends. I really don't like the way it feels anymore in this corner. So now I will be revamping this whole corner. I'm going to replace that letterbox with a new miniature that I create in the next video and giving this wall and this corner a whole new look to make it a little bit more cohesive with this old farmhouse and this hall tree here. So come back and see what I do for that. And until next time, tiny friends, I wanna thank everybody and all my subscribers. Thank you all so much. You all have a lovely day and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.